Hello everybody, my name is Aza, and welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich as the French Republic. Let us continue on for last of off. So there's a lot of protest. Uh, the military, very, very mad at us right now, which I can, I can understand. We have been blackmailing a lot of them, and that usually means, that makes make people upset. As far as I'm aware, if you blackmail people, they get mad at you. Which, I kind of wish they wouldn't. Un polite, uh, as the Jews, uh, it's French. As the crisis unfolds, it quickly becomes more obvious that the regime has lost most of its base of support. Veterans are shocked by the actions of the man they had revered for so long, and La Grande Woods is making herself heard loud and clear. She's outraged by the government's repression, the government desperately needs allies, and it seems at least one group, in part, might be interested in such partnership. The Royalist Action Francais. Indeed, today, Charles de Gaulle came to discuss privately on March of Patan about the potential alliance of circumstances. Bruiser seems to have taken upon himself to act as a link between his mentor and the party he has never hidden sympathies for, and though the, the National inter Integralists have been consistently and brazenly opposed to the Republic, uh, considering Patan's regime a barely step up from the weak pre-war government, they share a common trait, distrust of the parliamentary democracy and the Liberal parties whose rule led to the fall of France in the first place. As such, the Action Francais is suggesting unofficial cooperation with the regime, at least until the crisis is over, a partnership that could prove satisfactory for the Lion and his government. As an old, very well-established party of French action, has many sympathizers bo amongst both the upper and lower classes, within the church, the armory, and even employs some popularity with the native population, drawn in by promises of decentralization and respect for local customs. Its daily newspaper is amongst the most widely read in the nation, and the party controls a network of newspaper vendors in a... Uh, the Camelot de Roy, the King's Camelots, a security service made up of youngsters and students that some describe as a paramilitary force used to, uh, used to street balls and crowd control. Finally, some of the more radical members of the AF have hinted at being willing to use every tool in their disposal to take more direct action against the democratic camp. All this could be used to serve the regime and finally end the crisis once and for all. However, this partnership could also alienate the last few uh, loyal partisans of Patan, and there is no doubt that the service of the Action Francais would come at the cost of compromise with them down the road. But the regime simply cannot survive the next few weeks if we do not take the deal. Or the 400 blows. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll invite them into actions. The workers run away. Faced with a reduction of provisions that result in new policy placed by our government, large groups of native workers have taken to the risk and run for it. Overnight, several skilled workers got up from their barracks, raided the mess for food and supplies, and set off in the desert to find their way back home. Any search for these men have been impossible by the sweeping winds and racing their tracks in the sand. We must find more workers if we hope to finish this project. That's very rude. I was almost done stage one as well. So this is a four-step program. It's going to be very expensive to get that done. Like, very, very expensive. Now I have no trade influence in the United States. Fantastic. Um, why do you not like us? Trade, you've sanctioned us. Why have you, what have, what have we done to get sanctioned? Is it because I'm, like, brutally repressing people? Don't be a little baby about it. Maybe they shouldn't have done, maybe they shouldn't have protested. They didn't want, they didn't want to get shot. You ever think about that one? Spain, do you think you're going to have... Of course, we want the Carlists to win their war, because that is... Um, I mean, they can join the Entente one way or the other. But the Carlists Spain can only join the Entente, which is kind of why we want to, we want to support them when the Spanish War breaks out. Action Algerie. Found in the 20s by Fred Abbas in the Chaos of Exile, calling itself the principal media outlet for the integral nationalism alongside the main Action Francais, Action Algier has become one of the most popular newspapers in the Algerian departments. Its slogan, from colony to province, summarizes its fight alongside integralist principles, assimilation with Greater France, while still restricting privileges, traditions, and local laws against the centralization and disregard for indigenous customs of the Republic. Demanding native autonomy and social and economic regulation, universal suffrage and municipal elections, and for native notables to constitute an assembly advising the French government, Abbas has quickly found resonance among natives, particularly the assimilated elite and the influential indigenous chiefs, eager to defend their way of life against an ever-encroaching Republican government. However, the localized proposal of the action is not the only thing that they found resonance among natives. Its anti-Semitic rhetoric is also uh, proving popular. Legacy of Clement's decree, a law that granted full French citizenship to the Jewish population of French Algeria, but not to the Arab and Berber Muslim population, who remain to this day essentially second-class citizens. 
This wedge between the communities that had lived together in relative peace for centuries has proven easy to exploit for the far right, as some groups and parties even promised to repeal the creed to gain support from the natives, either out of genuine ideology con convergence or simply out of pragmatism. As they know that nothing could be achieved without their support, or at least the neutrality of the indigenous. Get a little bit more support for uh, the nationalist. And the fate of La Federation. On this, the 14th of July, we celebrate National Day. Uh, yeah, that, that's fine. Either way, let's enjoy ourselves. Give me the political power. Uh, we're right now at negative two. You've made our units a little bit better. I see, do our... Do any of these naval... I, I usually, like, neglect these. Are any of you actually any good? Night operation penalty. I mean, just fighter... Like, all planes being 10% cheaper is really good. Also, anti-air is actually really nice as well. Free naval dockyard. More naval dockyards. So, I think aircraft production is really good. 5% cheaper artillery. And a free military factory. But I think we want this manpower first. You're also manpower over there as well. Okay. Either way, I think I want this 0.5% manpower. Because right now we're at 1.5. Or are we at 1? No, we're at 2.5%. And it's getting modified ever so slightly. So that's what? A 20% increase, I believe? The 400 blows. The deal made with the action front site took effect immediately. The party's paper changed its stance on the regime, and the monarchist officers and soldiers participating in the parade simply stopped showing up. Using its vast network of influence in the upper classes and the armed forces, the party has managed to soothe some of the dissent coming from there, and the Camelot de Rule now shows up every day to push back against the protests and secure key areas. Not showing the same hesitation as regular forces to fight those still parading, and not having any care for regulations or avoiding injuries, it seems that... It would seem like the regime can uh, breathe a great sigh of relief as Mordek's movement is now far less ascendant. However, part of the lost ground for the democratic camp was due to the brutal tactics of the most radical, more radical elements of the French action, who have organized themselves in a highly structured, secretive, and independent group to take direct control action against the Bayer supporters. With little no oversight by the party and none from the government, intimidation, assassination, and even bombings in the last few weeks, it seems like nothing is too far for them. Uh, to take down the democratic camp. Nicknamed the organization de Qatar Santa Corps, the 400 years blow organization, or less literally, organization to raise hell, it's impossible to deny that they have been incredibly effective in suppressing their opponents, but the lion himself is quite horrified by the terroristic nature of the groups. We have no choice, it's for the good of France. And negative 10% stability, which probably is not helping out our resistance, but what can you do? Garrison attacked the French Sudan. Uh, game of Fran uh, football, attracted some board soldiers from one of the forts, yada yada yada. So you guys are mad at us. Are you... F where's, Fr where's French Sedan? Is it is it Chad? Because we don't own any of actual Sudan. So I'm assuming it's kind of these border provinces. I mean, actually, it did, it did say in the event. Um, but it didn't actually read it. Poland, which way did you go? You went for a true Polish king. So you're not going... Can you still join the Reichspact? Uh, going with the Polish king? I actually don't know. Let me actually see. What, what, what can Poland do? I, I actually think... I think you may be able to join Russia, actually. The Men in Green. The Commune Arts have announced a program to transform culture and entertainment, the so-called International Avant-Garde. Of radical artists aiming to tear down all that is beautiful in this world and transform it to fit the taste of madmen. All in the name of making art more palatable to the pro proletariat. Put it simply, they aim to do nothing less than destroy French culture. In their manifesto, it's professed a need to abolish the canons of French literature and poetry as well as radically transforming the rules of French grammar, the cry that's antique and bourgeois. To protest this crime against taste, culture, beauty, and frankly, civilization itself, the men of various academies of the Institute of France have assembled the Common Congress to produce a counter manifesto. All clad in the green trim formal attire, complete with the personalized or ornate sword and board codes. The, the 473 members of the Institute have signed a common appeal to the world under the, to undermine the efforts of these perverts and bohemians and pens a manifesto in which they call for the creation of the International Institute of Occident to fight the vanguard of inculture. 
This initiative has uh, received wide acclaim in France and some of her and among her and Entente allies, as well as from the German sphere. As for the international avant-garde, it's responded by send it, sending up an abstract statue representing bourgeois culture and classism made out of copies of the manifesto in front of the former location of the Institut de France in Paris. As the inauguration ceremony is underway, it was set ablaze by the known lunatic George Batil, a move that was applauded as an example of pure artistic spiffany by spontaneity by the organization. They're destroying our culture, so we gotta blow them up. It's just, that's just how it works. So we have no political power right now. We're gaining basically zero as well. But I, I'm, I'm sure that's fine. Nothing, nothing could possibly go wrong. So right now, Extra France is still the third most popular. They do have descriptions. Do, do, do they all have descriptions? I mean, they do, but I don't think the ENA can actually come to power in the French Republic. La, jour, la journée sanglette. So we in a ways of terrorist violence against the Democratic faction and the presence of increasingly aggressive camelots on the outskirts of the parades, tensions were running high. One day, some soldiers had brought their service weapons pretext the need for self-defense. The next, the Camelots themselves were armed. In reaction to this, both police and military deployed to maintain order brought out heavier weaponry. Furthermore, while the violence against Murdoch's partisans have intimidated many, it also brought them much sympathy from the general public, and as such, more and more civilians took part in the parades. What had started as a rather absurd display of anger by the Grand Mute is now a daily tense standoff from sunrise to sundown, with occasional brawls between protests from the Camelots. Miraculously, despite the numerous injuries sustained during daily brawls, no deaths had occurred at the parades. That is, until today. And one of the usual fights broke out between protesters and Camelots, a shot rang out, followed by a cry of pain. No one knows who fired it or where it came from, but after a split second of shock silence, there was chaos. More and more gunshots came from each side, and with each with each one protester, Camelot police and military fell to the ground, some wounded, some dead. Initially overwhelmed, the regime forces quickly regained their composure. Uh, the sight of their dead comrades shedding any feelings of hesitation they might have had towards fighting against fellow soldiers. Things quickly turned to the street to street fighting, with barricades and being hastily constructed by protesters, engaging what could only be described as fighting retreat. Most of them being active duty soldiers or veterans, there was certainly confusion, but no panic. Uh, though they have been pushed back to the littoral, the protesters remained in firm control of much of the center of Algiers as the government forces went uh, forces await further orders. So, the strategy meeting has gone on for hours, and it was already evening. Deeply shocked by the events unfolding, Marshal Patan has dismissed all proposals from the military, the police minister's advisor, and even his protege, Charles de Gaulle, considering them all at risk of losing too many lives. Thousands of protesters have gone nowhere, and a lack of central leadership among them would make any consensus impossible anyway. A tense silence had fallen on the conference room in the presidential palace, broken only by the sigh sound of occasional gunshots. Then, news came. The protesters had seized a heavy machine gun and had chosen to fall back further into fortify a large plaza where a field hospital had been set up. Any assault would be extremely costly and everyone knew room it. And then, quietly, almost a whisper. Shell them. A young naval officer had broken the silence. He continued, you could shell them. The Liberty class dreadnought Dremakai is anchored a few miles from Algiers. If we wait until nightfall in order to shell the plaza, it would create enough confusion to storm the camp while minimizing damage to the city and our losses of force. They're expecting an assault from land, certainly not from the sea. After a few seconds of silence, the line of Verdun angrily stood up, but before he could speak, Charles de Gaulle, the rooster, intervened. I'm afraid that we have no choice here. If we let the situation fester, we could wake up tomorrow morning with a general insurrection. We must nip the resolution in the bud and act fast. I'm sorry, Marshal, but now is the time for action, not debate. And so, as Philippe Patan fell silent, the order was given. The order is sent. So, I mean, we're just going to shell our own city from the sea. Actually, is one of these ships actually called, uh, Democracy? Yeah, no, there it is, right there. Interesting. Okay, that's kind of neat. What if, theoretically, like, we didn't actually have this ship here? Like, what if actually all of our ships were just... What if I deleted all of my navy? I, I, I don't think that would actually affect the event. But it, it'd be interesting if it actually did. Like, if you actually deleted... If your navy wasn't here for some reason, then you couldn't actually do that decision. Les Ledman. Massacre, bloodbath. 
That is how the foreign press described the event in Algiers. The pro strategy was indeed incredibly effective, and as soon as the first shield hit the pro hit the protesters abandoned any kind of organization defense and fled in all directions, only to run into our forces assaulting the plaza. Whether they immediately surrendered or were promptly dealt with, tales of mangled bodies, of brutal treatment of prisoners, and of summary executions are being spread by communist art agents, but our, own, but our nation knows the truth. The next morning, the front page newspaper read, Attempted coup bravely defeated. The threat posed by these red traitors has finally been dealt with, and a few remaining so-called Democrats are now either in custody awaiting trial for their crimes, in hiding, uh, though they may be found sooner or later, or lie dead in a mass grave slowly filling up as the plaza is being cleared up. Henry Mordic, or what is left of his body, has been found and identified by his uniform. The bear himself is dead, and we can now breathe a sigh of relief. Marge Baton is, however, deeply affected by what has happened and has not let the presidential palace sit, refusing to see anyone other than his wife and his confessor, only occasionally wandering outside of his quarters, mumbling to himself. As such, Charles de Gaulle has unofficially stepped in to help run the government affairs for the time being. After all, who better than Lyon's protege to, take, to make sure things go smoothly in these critical times? I have been promoted to the rank of general for his bravery and dealing and his skill dealing with the crisis. Francis Billy is now the utmost priority for the rooster, and as such, he's launched a large-scale investigation to find and bring justice to any and all of those who might have been involved in an attempted coup. Much remains to be done, but those who would dare endanger the party in these critical times are now warned: no longer would the traitorous behavior be tolerated. So, I mean, I I feel like shelling your own city with like a might, might have some problems. Monsi Bay rumored to help uh, Tunisian nationalists. Our secret police threw a, threw a concerning report on the deaths of the French general resident in Tunisia. The document tells about how the Tunisian nationalists entered the Bissell Palace in which the Prince Monsi Bay resides. These matters of nationalists to store party aren't the most important ones. They aren't Habib Bourga or Adiz Talibi, but most of them are suspect of treason. They come in and leave the palace discreetly and transporting nothing but their, uh, Transporting nothing, but there is no doubt that Bay is transmitting them important piece of information. Monsal Bay is the son of one of the previous honorary monarchs of the Protectorate of Tunisia, Nasir Bay, and is the grand nephew of the current ruling Bay, Ahmed II. He has also been remarked for his opposition to the French regime, and doesn't hide too much his liking of the Tunisian nationalists. The situation is particularly concerning considering Monsef is the next in line of succession to the statue of the Bay after Ahmed II. Whatever he is actually doing to help these terrorists, an opponent can't be tolerated this close to power, and with an important military presence and intervention to secure the bay wouldn't meet a lot of resistance. Yeah, just arrest him. We got like no political power, but we we'll, we'll, we just shelled our own city. I'm fine arresting some dude in Tunisia. You know what I mean? It, it is what it is. So did anything else get unlocked? Not with you. Oh, such. So Artillery. Cause goes down by 15 per Like, that adds on to this, doesn't it? It's gonna be like a negative 20% cost. And also, like, three military factors for these two folks. This, you know what? You know, that seems really good. 20% reduction in cost for artillery pieces is, I, I think, actually kind of crazy. Jabal Shamir has declared war on somebody else. And workers have gone on strike. Yeah, just, just improved conditions. I. I can't be in a situation where we can't build a railway. Okay, so we finished stage one. We can't do stage two until we have some political power, but of course we basically generate zero. So Belgium, what are you going to do? They, they might not join back up with the rice back. We'll see. And humanized integral. Integral humanism, temporal and spir spiritual problems of the new Christianity. The recently published work of influential Catholic philosopher Jacques Martin has caused passionate debate among Catholics. A convert from Protestantism, once close to the extra state despite not being a monarchist, most of their suspicion towards representative democracy and opposition to anti-clerical policies of the Republic. Martin has drifted after the shock of the exile towards more moderate positions, closer to the personalized movement and the Christian democracy, rejecting both reaction and liberalism, secularism and interest politician, a political Catholicism, embracing humanism, arguing for human rights, and the importance of family, pluralistic democracy, and responsibility towards the common good. All in the spirit of social teachers of the church, the philosopher is somewhat going against the grain, indeed, much of French Catholic laity uh, and hierarchy has been radicalized by the current situation, the AF has even denounced integral humanism as a work of traitor, a sellout to democratism, and a red saboteur. However, among more progressive Catholics, Martin's work is very well received, uh, granting, granting praise from Father Martini, 
close advisor of the Pope, and some moderates even be, uh, being drawn away from the action français, heeding his warning that the movement is merely using the faith as a tool to further their political ideology. Thank you for the 10 uh, political power. That is like 40 days worth of points. And yeah, more people in chat are just mad at us. Well, well like, what can you do, right? How is active resistance looking? Because I mean, if it's not so bad, that would be nice. 46. I mean, everywhere right now is actually trending downwards, which is nice. And the De Gaulle government. After a month of turmoil, applauding, a violence caused by the enemies of the nation, it seems that things are finally looking up for France. Having formed a new government, Charles de Gaulle is now president of the Council of Ministers, was finally able to start dealing with much of the rot that had been set in the Irish administration and the armed forces. Corrupt bureaucrats and psychophants, having taken advantage of the AG Marshal, suspected communard agents, Monarch sympathizers and generally those setting back national interests are being dealt with, arrested, judged by special courts, and either put down or imprisoned. Though we could have fear and instability after the Marshal's temporary condition has been made public, the Gaul's energetic guidance and his stat status as a respected war hero, as a protege of Pathan, and his own personal privilege, prestige, alleviated the fears of many. With the sheer scale of the corruption has been dutifully reported by the media, and each day a new arrest, a new scandal sh shocks our people, who finally truly understand this truth. Just as the rooster has described it in La Discord, the great threats facing us does not come from outside our borders, but from within. The defeats, the struggles, the sacrifices now all make sense. Our efforts have been sabotaged, wasted by inside forces. However, our efforts are, fi are finally once and for all been dealt with as a parasite's plague in a uh, party, are still being restricted by petty liberal concerns, and the Gaul realizes that extraordinary measures must be taken to ensure the salvation of France. And as such, he comes to Philippe Pétain with a proposal for the Lion of Verdun to resign as president of the French Republic, to enjoy a glorious retirement, and be able to carve his clearly ailing health. And for the motion to be presented in front of the National Assembly, granting the government full powers to create and, and proclamate a new constitution better suited to defend national interests. A course final decision for the Marshal to make. Of course, the goal knows best, and now it's time for the lion to proudly retire. How old is he? Does it actually say? You know, actually, a lot of bonus on a core territory, but you are not considered core, right? No, you're just claimed. If you were core, then that modifier would actually like really, really good. Just saying a flat 5% attack and defense in all of France. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So, Le Chant du Coq. A new dawn is rising in France. The Lion himself has come to make a speech in front of the National Assembly, broadcast on radio, citing his old age and ailing health. The Tyre Baton announced his retirement, then proceeded to thank all those who had supported him in troubling times since the Grand Greer, and particularly veterans, making less than a subtle reference to Charles de Gaulle. His closest statement calls for a peaceful transition to power and reforming his trust in de Gaulle to guide the nation in these troubled times and the people that continue to fight to retake the metropolis. Marshal Baton ended his speech with a simple phrase, quoted from his iconic order so many years ago at Verdun, Courage on les aura. Be strong, we'll get him. Immediately followed by thunderous applause and a large standing ovation, as the applause died down, the voice resonated, Marshal Merci, Marshal thank you, a breach of protocol that all in the room immediately happily imit uh, imitated, Outside the building, the population has spontaneously come together to say goodbye to the savior of France, regardless of class and status, thanking Philippe Pétain as he was leaving on foot, as all the anger, all the fears of the past few weeks and the years at least momentarily disappeared. Pétain himself, usually so stoic, looked emotional, and strangely enough, relieved. After a short break, the deputy, known supporter for Action Francais, rose to deliver a clearly rehearsed speech detailing the extent of corruption recently unveiled and reminding his fellow congressmen of the orgy of violence that had engulfed the nation. Finally, calling for extra minority powers to be given to de Gaulle's government to be able to truly reform the party. Assembly had been cleansed from so much of the rot that it said since the exile that this too was met with thunderous applause and emotions quickly put together. So, Baton is now gone. De Gaulle is the only military leader we have. And you should be retiring any moment now. Yeah, Action Front Stage is just by far the most popular party right now. Garrison is attacked. I, I want to end this episode with the Gaul actually in charge, but I guess, you know, we'll, we'll worry about that next time. But for now, thanks very much for watching. My name is Liam. If you've enjoyed, run a thumbs up. Not to click thumbs down. You want to see more, subscribe, and goodbye.